It's BBC Radio Berkshire. It's shares. If I could turn back time. Right, quarter to four. And the popular high street jewellery company Pandora has announced it will no longer sell diamonds that have been taken from mines. The company is now only going to sell gems that have been made in a lab. So is this the way forward for diamond production? Uh, Paul Zimniski is a diamond expert in New York. And Paul, hello to you. Um, so let's have a look at you know, mined diamonds then. What's so bad about them? Yeah, well, I think first off, I think with jewelry, there's typically a bifurcation between what I would call fashion jewelry, which tends to be lower priced, more fun, you know, more suited for everyday wear. And then you have fine jewelry, which is higher priced. It tends to be more formal. You know, this is where you see the engagement rings and the bridal jewelry. Um, and the fashion jewelry companies seem to be adopting man-made diamonds more readily than the fine jewelry companies. And I think that's what we're seeing with, uh, you know, Pandora right now. Can you tell the difference? Um, we can with the proper equipment. Um, I think it's important to understand that diamond is not an element. It's a mineral. And there are different types of diamond based on the impurities, even though there's still diamond as far as being a mineral. So not to, to bore your audience too much, um, but this is typically how laboratories distinguish between natural and man-made diamonds. And sometimes with a microscope, you can see growth patterns, you know, with the man-made diamonds. Um, but consumers are not going to be able to tell the difference, you know, with the naked eye. Um, but just as most consumers can tell the difference between a diamond and say a white sapphire or a cubic zirconia. Um, but professionals with the proper equipment can um, so just to be clear, we can distinguish between man-made and natural diamonds. Looking at the, the, the mined diamonds then, uh, obviously there is a whole process of getting those out the ground um, and, and that's part of the problem because uh, it clearly um, is uh, quite a job. R right, ex exactly. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's uh, th there's definitely consequences to, you know, any type of mining. And, uh, and I think, you know, the, the question becomes, you know, why would um, anybody this day and age, you know, want a natural diamond? And um, I think it's a, a question of consumer psychology. You know, diamond jewelry, it's a luxury product and luxury is not always practical. And, you know, as humans, we valued rare and you know precious metals and precious stones since the beginning of recorded history. And, you know, people buy luxury items like jewelry because they like the way it makes them feel. And, um, they like knowing that it's naturally occurring and knowing that it's limited in nature um, and rare compared to a manufactured product. And, you know, because of that, diamonds are expensive and everybody can't afford as much of it as they would probably like. Um, but again, I think it's important to remember that luxury is not always practical. And a lot of this is actually an analysis in consumer psychology. And I think that's where marketing comes in, you know, to, to create image and, you know, kind of create that emotion and that desire. Um, and, and I think all of us can probably relate to that, you know, in, in, in one way or another. But um, it's an interesting, you know, analysis in psychology, I would say. I mean, I suppose inherently it's just, uh, you know, a piece of coal that's gone through some sort of major process, isn't it? A mixture of compression and heat, I imagine. But uh, nevertheless, how do you make it in a lab? So there's uh, two primary ways that they that they use to create synthetic diamond. Um, you know, we've been able to produce it for decades now. Primarily, we've been producing it for industrial abrasive application, like for mining and, and construction uses. Um, but it's it's basically trying to kind of recreate the conditions uh, that, that that nature does. Um, so, you know, it, it has to do with creating a tremendous amount of pressure to try to. Um, you know, press the carbon into a diamond or in some cases, you know, in increasing the temperature to, to, to really, really, really high levels, you know, in some cases as, as hot as the sun. Um, and and you know, that creates a, you know, it, it takes a lot of energy to do that. And I think that's part of kind of the conversation when we're looking at, you know, man-made diamond jewelry as a newer product and, you know, what is the carbon footprint? And I think, um, you know, there's, there's no free lunch, I think, when it comes to, 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 to diamonds as far as um, the carbon footprint. Uh, just finally, I mean, you, you, you mentioned uh, that perhaps the, the way forward really is uh, is actually sort of um, education, really, uh, and and uh, the way it's sold and way it's uh, shown to us, because uh, there is always that, I suppose, that, as you say, that sort of snob value in mine diamonds. But do you think over time our tastes will change a bit like faux fur, as it were? Um, possibly. Again, I, th I think the answer is to continue to improve the way that we produce both of these products, natural and uh, mine. And I think when we look at um, the man-made diamonds, I think eventually when it gets to the point where we only want them if they're produced with, say, renewable energy like hydropower, 
Um, and with the mining companies, I think we want to buy from companies that are going above and beyond to reduce the environmental footprint as much as possible, but also provide you know social impact in the local communities. Um, and and I, I think that's really the key to this. You're a diamond expert, so you see diamonds every day. It never fails to make you smile or give you excitement to see a diamond. They're, they're, they're quite stunning uh, in, in, in person, that's for sure. Yes, and everyone different. Really good to speak to you, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. Have a good day in New York as well. Uh, Paul Zimniski there, diamond expert uh, from New York, uh, talking about uh, the story today uh, about Pandora, uh, the jewellery company, uh, who are going to be making uh, or using and selling diamonds made in a lab. Wild and running, fearless, this is burning bright. 